Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what is the Hawthorne effect? So the Hawthorne effect refers to the interpretation of research findings from research that was conducted in the mid-20s to the early 30s in the Western Electric Hawthorne plant in Cicero, Illinois. And it's a bit of a controversial topic because it confuses demand characteristics with productivity increasing because of observation. So when we look at the original study that generated the Hawthorne effect, we're looking at the effect of illumination on productivity of workers. There were also other variables that were changed, including what breaks were given and the schedule, how long the workday was, the location of work stations, as well as other factors. All of the changes that the researchers made appeared to be increasing productivity. At least that's what the Hawthorne effect is based on. In actuality, if you look at the first three experiments, the productivity increased for the first, didn't change for the second, and actually decreased for the third. So why is the Hawthorne effect controversial? Why has it been essentially dismissed for the most part? Well, there were a number of methodological problems with the original studies, including that the environment was not tightly controlled, there was a potentially bias from the standpoint of the researchers, the work was not the same across different subjects, so they were measuring different types of output. Also, all the changes in illumination were made on a Sunday, so the researchers were comparing the productivity from a Saturday to the productivity on a Monday, because they made that change to the lighting on Sunday, even though productivity went up on Mondays anyway. So they thought that the lighting was making a change when really that was just the natural cycle of the work week. Also, a key part of the Hawthorne effect is based on the idea that after changes ceased and after observations ceased, that the productivity returned back to normal. And actually the study ended in the summer when productivity decreased anyway. So really there's a number of problems with the original study and with subsequent interpretations of the study. Also, the Hawthorne effect has been studied quite a bit since the original research, and only a few studies have found it. Many more have not found the effect. One of the difficulties with the Hawthorne effect is it gets confused with the idea of demand characteristics. So we know from conducting research that sometimes participants will work in a manner that tries to please the experimenters. That could involve sometimes increasing productivity, but it could also involve trying to figure out what the experimenter is trying to find and moving toward that type of behavior, moving toward behavior that will achieve that goal. The Hawthorne effect is different than demand characteristics. It's not an extension of demand characteristics or really even another version of it. The Hawthorne effect specifically says that any observation and any changes in a work environment will always increase productivity, which again just is not the case. So specifically, the idea of the reactivity consistent with the Hawthorne effect doesn't exist, but demand characteristics do exist. Individuals, participants in studies, as I mentioned, sometimes change behavior to meet the expectations they believe experimenter has. So the Hawthorne effect and demand characteristics are not the same thing. One of the key findings related to the Hawthorne effect isn't the Hawthorne effect itself, but rather how persistent this belief has been over the years. The Hawthorne effect became established and other textbooks and articles featured the Hawthorne effect and really it was assumed to be true for many years. It's held on even though we know that it doesn't actually exist. Really what we can learn from the Hawthorne effect is that we need to be skeptical and we need to consistently apply the scientific method when evaluating research, when interpreting the output from research. It's easy to find something that's interesting, even if it's not there, to see something interesting, to see something that we can use. And also it's easy to get pulled into having bias, to want a particular outcome, and to only see evidence that supports that outcome. So we can learn a lot from the Hawthorne effect, but what we can't learn from this is that Productivity increases when people are being watched, because that doesn't appear to be true. Demand characteristics, on the other hand, as I mentioned, are real, 
and actually they are a threat to the validity of many experiments. I hope you found this description of the Hawthorne effect to be interesting. Thanks for watching.